After almost two decades of being an actor, I decided to open up a production company that I've been dreaming about having for over five years now. It was always in the back of my mind, but I was waiting for the right time. And by time, I mean by the time I'm a series regular on a show. The problem with that is sometimes that requires waiting, and I hate waiting. But more than I hate waiting, I hate relying on other people's decisions to determine my success. There's nothing like a pandemic where you lose your livelihood for an undetermined amount of time to make you realize that there isn't ever gonna be a right time to do what you know you should and what you know you want. It's like having a baby. You take the leap, you somehow figure it out, and at all costs, you keep the baby alive. Literally a week after my new business partner, Tim Sabatino, found a place to live in Georgia, we decided to get to work and see how we can form a company. What type of stuff do we want to produce? Who will be our clients? And how will we divvy up our hats? Tim has worn many hats living in LA from being an actor to a stunt driver to an AD, a director, a photographer, and an overall artist. And me, having performed in over a hundred commercials, TV shows, and stage performances, and essentially been producing my own self-tapes and YouTube content for the past year, I started to realize that I had already become a producer, and now it was time to get paid for it. Once the decision was made, our, if you build it, it will come, moment came within days. We had a script in hand where the writer had lost their director and crew, and they needed a replacement fast, which was ironic since we had named our company Fast Flow Productions. The script was hilarious, and it was the perfect fit for the exact type of material we wanted to produce for our first indie film to share with the world. Last week, we went scouting for our shoot locations, met with the writers in person, and I may or may not have had a sound of music moment and an impromptu maternity photo shoot. I was completely blown away by the beauty of Hiawassee, which is located in the North Georgia mountains. It's no wonder Georgia is quickly becoming the Hollywood of the South. We are wrapping up the finishing touches to start shooting by the summer, and hopefully before baby girl number three arrives. I'll also be making an acting cameo as Dr. Thompson, which was an unexpected surprise. There are a lot of moving parts to producing a film, from casting to crew to scoring to getting funding to securing actors and locations, but the reward is so worth it, especially if you're aligned with a great team, which we feel we hit the jackpot on for it was them who made it more real about what was possible. A recurring motto of the writer and lead of our movie, Jasmine Durnell. To put it in perspective, Netflix has over 222 million subscribers. Hulu has 43.8 million paid subscribers. And Amazon has over 200 million global subscribers. If only 1% rented an indie movie for $5, ours for example, that would be over $23 million. To drive the point even further, with a budget of $6.5 million, indie film Juno grossed $231 million globally. And My Big Fat Greek Wedding, with a $5 million budget, grossed $368 million worldwide, being the biggest net profit of any rom-com ever. It's statistics like these that make you wonder why every actor is not chomping at the bit to write and star in their own film, which can have even a micro budget of 5,000 or less. I mean, if you think about it, the actor is one of the most valuable assets to telling the story. Yet, we are getting the shortest end of the stick. My point is, if you have an idea, go with it. Create a tribe or a team and make something you believe in that is the exact right casting for you. Just put one foot in front of the other. I'll see you out there. Bye for now. Take a little time for me, myself and I, on this drive.